This podcast brought to you by OuchThatHurts.com. Visit Ouch That Hurts for music, gaming, reviews, editorials, podcasts, and more. Ouch That Hurts, H E R T Z dot com. Come hang out and chat with everyone on our Discord channel. Be a part of our community. Fucked up the whole Flashpoint. Like they had such a great, they had such a great possibility to do Flashpoint. And I'm like, I'm like, no, do Flashpoint. Like the closest we. How's it going, everyone? So yeah, kind of lied about last week's episode being the last pre-roll. Oops. No, this is officially. Actually, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. From moving forward, this technically will be the last pre-roll unless something happens. Besides that. The reason I'm doing this is because two things. One, uh, there's a giveaway that I'm doing for anyone who plays games out there. Um, it's going to be in the link below. So, yeah, you're more than welcome to participate in. You might win some free games. And two is we have Manny from No Inner Monologue this week. Uh, it's a shorter episode, so I'm going to let you know ahead of time. Uh, this time there is no story time or game due to him having some technical issues. Uh, he's out over there in the Philippines. The guys from No Inner Monologue just got rid of him. They mailed him away. And he somehow contacted me to <laughs> make some SOS call, you know. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, so today we have Manny. Uh, we can't get rid of him. But you know, we love him to death. Someone has to. So, yeah, um, that's about it. You know, short episode, game giveaway. That's kind of it. So, let's get on with the so show. Let's get on with the show. And welcome back to another episode of the Convoluted Podcast. It's your host, Jesus, a.k.a. Tyrant Dominus. And I want to thank OuchThatHurts.com for uh, being affiliated with this podcast. But today, we have a returning guest. We have Manuel Lujan. Actually, he's clear across the world at this moment. But let's, uh, let's hear from him a little bit. Hey, Jesus, glad to be back on here. And yes, I am very much clear across the world. I am actually in Naga, Philippines for this, uh, this recording while I'm recording this. So they finally sent you away, huh? Yeah, I've, they, uh, the Canadian government is like, fuck this guy. Out, get out. <laughs> they survived you like you're done. Go oh, on. yeah, they survived. Yeah, but there's, uh, okay, but there's worse places to be. There's uh, right now. The temp- What's the temperature outside for you, Jesus? Uh, 24. I see. Would you mind Canadianizing that for me, please? Oh, shit. Yeah, we're American. We, we only have yeah. one. Um, 24 degrees Fahrenheit. Is To our international people, we'll figure this out. It is dun, 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 four, negative 4. Degrees Negative Celsius. four degrees, eh? Yeah. Dude, it is 36 degrees Celsius outside. I'll do that in my math. Now to the cool. other way. It is 96 here. Fuck, man. I am, I am, yeah. I am jealous right now. I, know, I am right? jealous. You know, there, you know there is some math nerd that's listening to this. He's like, oh, he needed to calculate that. Yeah, the temperature is good. <laughs> hey, people. America has it the right way, and everyone has to change. No, actually, you know, to be honest, uh, <laughs> I don't know why the Americans use the imperial system. It is completely stupid when 80% of the world uses the metric system. So um, I, that's actually a really interesting question. I don't know why that oh. you guys do that. It's, it's, I know that there's been talk of trying to get that flip-flop changed around. It's, it's, uh, it's hard. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's stupid sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But... Hey, so you're in Oregon, right? Yeah. I recently read a really interesting story that 
a man survived off Taco Bell packets in a yes. snowstorm? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It, I read about this just a little bit ago. So uh, do you want to enlighten the people a little bit or do you want me to? So from what I read in the story is this man got stuck in his car, him and his dog. And the only thing that they had to eat with him was Taco Bell sauces. So he went all survivor on us. And just rationed out Taco Bell sauces until the snow melter, he was able to get out of his car to get uh, to seek help. Now, him and his dog both ate this. Now, I don't know, man. At one point, I'm sure that dog looked delicious. <laughs> uh, so, I, okay, so I was reading this on a Reddit post, and then I, I, I read it a little bit, and then I actually read the article. It wasn't too long of an article. Uh, he wasn't, he's, he's a couple, he, ooh, he's a good drive from where I'm currently at. But, uh, yeah, that, that day, I remember it. We, my area got a little bit of snow, uh, so it wasn't hit too bad. But I knew a couple places around me did. And, uh, but in Oregon, you see a few inches of snow. Even, if, like, an inch of snow, people panic. Like, people go bonkers. It's like the apocalypse around here. So that really? kind of tells you a little. Yeah, it's really bad. That's um, funny. It is, trust me. It is funny because people, like, uh, for most pe people listening, uh, everyone knows uh, that I work in the grocery business. And. Uh, that you make, uh, I, Jesus, when you say that, you, make, you sound like a mobster. Especially when. Uh, <laughs> now, let, let's, let's, let me see if I understand Jesus here, okay? So, Jesus, from, formerly from Chicago, is in the grocery business. Hmm. <laughs> there's some flag. There's some flags there. There's some. You're not doing a good enough story there to hide your, uh, what you're really doing there, but. Uh, well, anyways, uh, before I get outed, uh, yeah. I don't know. People just panic for no apparent reason sometimes. Uh, but the the one thing I read about this specific article and what happened to this guy is uh, normally. <laughs> Like I said, people panic around here. So normally some people, they carry some emergency supplies in their vehicle. You know, some water, some food, blankets, and stuff like that. This guy didn't. Uh, on top of that, he left his home uh, without uh, noticing the warnings that they were putting out. What, two inches of snow is a warning yeah. for you guys? <laughs> wow. Hey, yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, two inches of snow is considered a holiday for us. Oh, trust me, man. Sure. I, I I miss the snow a lot. It's like we we get we get a little like a cover of it. It looks nice, and then it's gone by the afternoon. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you're a shy town boy, so you're used to the like the crazy snowstorms. No, yeah, that's why it's like yeah. like it's yeah, it's saddening, but it's hilarious. People seeing people panic. But what what was interesting about this article is uh, I was kind of reading, and then I was reading through the Reddit comments. Uh, someone pointed out that the guy, uh, the the actual article, the the main article that was posted, they they weren't. They were like, we we're surprised he survived on uh, taco sauce packets, and w when he didn't have any water or food in the vehicle. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy stayed in a vehicle, periodically turned on his vehicle to keep the car and him and his dog warm. At no point do did anyone think about him? He was like, okay, there's snow. Melt snow equals water. Mm hmm. Mm. You know, it's... Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think the Taco Bell package might have just been, like, the joke of the article, right? It I was. Mean, I'm sh I mean, I'm sure he mentioned it in passing, like, oh, what, what did you eat? I'm like, man, I had some Taco Bell packages as a joke. But, I mean, I think, like, what is it? The human body can go three, four, maybe even five days without food, fasting, but it's water that you need the most, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So he, he, had, he had water. <laughs> like, there was everywhere around him. But here's, yeah. a, here's, the, here's like, I think, the, 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 the most... It's not... It's, in my opinion, it's pretty tame of a joke, but for some people, it was pretty offensive. It's like, one of the, the comments I saw on the Reddit post was, like, uh, because the, the post said, like, uh, man survived off taco sauce uh after being stuck uh the the redditor posted and i forgive me for not um for not properly citing you but he said what the article doesn't tell you is his dog name was taco sauce oh i read that one yeah <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> like uh, it, it's funny. Some like I read the sub the the sub thread after that. Some people were not happy about it. It's, it's a joke. Come on. Uh, it is a joke. People need to have a sense of humor. Hey, um, I know this is just random, but you know what? You just saying that reminded me of the Titans. Uh, did you watch Titans? Um, the DC show. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't get to watch it uh, because you have to like pay a different like streaming site is, for that. Is it on Netflix for you? No, it, okay. So for America, you have to pay for like this weird DC streaming site. The rest of the world can get it on Netflix. Oh wow! Okay, that explains a lot. Never yeah, mind. that's what, that's another reason. Say, uh, I was gonna say we could talk. Uh, we were gonna talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the ending of Titans. So now you can. You can, no, you can talk about it. Uh, chances are, I probably will never end up watching it. Okay, well, just at the final episode, they tease Superboy and Crypto. Ooh, I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so that was Wait. interesting. Superboy? Yeah. Like, the, yeah. In, in, in this world, does Superman have a child, or is it a, like a clone yeah. of Superman? I would like... imagine it, it, it follows the Teen Titans. It's a clone. Hello? Okay, you're good now. Yeah, I would imagine it's a clone. Okay, so it's they're using that storyline, or that yeah. version of it. Okay, okay. Uh, heads up to the audience. Um, like, like we said, that Manuel is literally half a time around the world, so we're going to might have some audio issues, but I'll do my best to fix it on editing, and we'll do our best to stay connected. So I hope you guys are patient with us. But, uh, yes. no, that... Uh, Thank no, you very much to your audience. <laughs> Thank hey, you very me. much to your audience. Trust me. Yeah. They, 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 you've been here, what, four? This is like I your fourth I, time here. This is my fourth, uh, this is my fourth appearance on, on your podcast. It's, uh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm, I enjoy I was recently able to, and regarding audio issues, we did have some audio issues on our last episode of the No Inner Monologue podcast. Yeah, I actually listened to that, like your wild uh, hunter story and everything. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, we have it. No, um, the last episode we recorded, which is slated to come out uh, midnight, March 5th. Yeah. A new episode coming out. Um, we did have some audio issues while recording. That too? Oh, that sucks, man. Yeah, it does. It does suck. But see, I, I figured it out. Like the Wi-Fi that I have here at the hotel, it's good. It gives me about six, seven megabits down. Now, I know that some people are saying six, seven megabits down is not good. But when like the average speed around here is like 1.1 1.2 that's good oh wow okay yeah yeah so i'm happy about that and luckily there's an audio format if you were doing video that was <laughs> not the no kill oh yeah video would not happen man so no like so uh, actually i want to you mentioned it on your show so if anyone wants to know a little bit more of what's happening with manny and everything go go check out the no inner monologue i've had all all four members on this show yeah, you finally um, got the rare Giuseppe. Hey, man, Joey was hard to get hold of. Yeah. Uh, but and uh, Tash is gonna be coming back uh, for a future episode. Yeah, so, I, I, that's amazing. Tash is a lot of fun to talk to. Yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yo, just say, you know, Tash is a big nerd too, eh? You no, can yeah, nerd yeah. out with you can nerd out with her always. She, I, I, have you ever heard? If you actually listen to us, sometimes Tash and I do nerd out. Right, while Joe and Dwayne are like, shut the fuck up, guys. <laughs> the 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 way the way I see it on your the show is like, uh, Dwayne has to be like the 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 adult, the dad of, of the podcast to kind of settle everyone down. Oh yeah. And then Joey and Joey's just uh like uh Joey, the stepmom. He, no, no, Joey is Joey's essentially like um the little brother. That, no, no, he's that asshole uh, friend of your dad's. That comes by. That's how I see Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, he, like he's a nice guy. I mean, you have nothing against him, but then, you know, but but then he says things and does things. That's like oh, he's a bit of an asshole or a bit of a know it all. That's how Joe is. I'm just kidding. Joey is actually awesome. I love Joe. He has a he has a deep understanding of a lot of things. Yes, yes, he, uh, yeah. From what I've with from what I've talked with him, yeah. Uh, yeah. Look forward to some future stuff for, with everyone else, but today it's it's your time to shine. Yeah, so I got to tell you an interesting story. Um, yeah, go for it. Over this 
over this past weekend, we ended up, um, me, my, me, my work colleagues, and our team, uh, it's the fir- it was the first weekend of summer here. And they're like, you know what? We, you know, they, they go on a vacation. We went to an island, uh, a remote island. I'm not kidding when I say remote. I'll send you a picture of where it's located. Right? Uh, it's called Caliguas, Caliguas. Um, white sand beach, beautiful, beautiful island. To get there, it's a two, uh, two and a half. You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, oh, perfect. It's a two and a half hour bus ride to a station, to a dock, and then it's a two and a half hour bus ride, uh, sorry, boat ride to the island. Okay. So it's, a, it's, it's a trek. But anyways, <laughs> when you're there, you're isolated. There's no electricity, no, uh, well, no real electricity. There's a little bit of electricity. Um, there's, it's, it's so much good. It's so cool. But one of the highlights of the trip was I got a little um, intoxicated, I guess you could say, a little bit. A little okay. Bit. Yeah, uh, there's someone randomly on my balcony right now, by the way. That, that's random. Anyways, <laughs> um, okay, it's weird. But anyway, sorry, I got distracted by the fact that there's some random stranger looking in on my balcony. Just hold looking at you? Yeah, hold okay. on a sec. Hold on, hold on. Hey, can I help you? Okay. For anyone listening, we're just making sure Manny's still alive. Okay, I'm back. Okay, you're, so you're, so you're all good. Yeah. You're, you're, not getting, that, that you're not getting mugged. <laughs> No, no, that was weird. So the guy was on my balcony. He was telling. He just told me that they're just doing the um, the weekly outside window cleaning. That okay, was weird. <laughs> that, was that was weird. weird. That was weird. Anyways, so yeah. Um, so so where was I? Oh yeah. So I was a little bit of uh, on the slosh side, and uh, and then now the thing is, I always try to behave like because I have to maintain this appearance of being serious. Okay, being serious and everything in front of like because I'm kind of here, you know, doing work. I don't want to. I don't want them to know the true Manny just yet of my <laughs> off-the-walls bonkerness. Um, so instead of, you know, instead of I'm like, okay, I better not say anything stupid. So what do I do? I land on the, I stay on the beach and I just tell, and I start talking to people about astrology, not astrology, astronomy. So there I am, drunk is kind of drunk, keep maintaining it. And I'm trying to point out Orion's belt, I'm trying to explain to people about aliens, I'm trying to explain to people about the Seri signals, about repeating signals, about how chances are, the probability is that we are not alone out there, but we are, we're just probably life out there, but the chances of intelligent life is very slim. So okay. I was going on and on and on about this. I pointed out where Venus is, uh, you know, in the sky. I told them, you know, that, uh, you know, that basically Venus, Earth, and Mars, how they're just, uh, how any of those three planets would be interchangeable in the habitables, in the habitable zone. I went on, dude. I like apparently, like I came back and they call now they're calling me the like the professor because I just <laughs> went on. Okay, I have I have one question. So sure. from from a scale from one to ten in shots, how drunk were you? Hmm. Hmm. Like a six, seven. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put it to you this way. I had a, I brought a bottle of rum, and the bottle of rum is gone. <laughs> okay. I, was, I, was, I was not, uh, I was not, I don't know how I maintained it. Although I almost, on the way back though, I almost puked, like on the boat ride back. Oh my God, that was awful. Oh man, that can, oh yeah. God, that can only imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was but, not, that was no bueno. That was de- a definite no bueno. Hey, being known, hey as know, the, being known as a professor is better than being known as a complete drunk. So. Oh, uh, I'm also known as 12 Inches. And I was like, okay, that's not the worst nickname you can give me, but all right. <laughs> not the worst nickname. Oh, God, I don't even want to know about that. Yeah, they made a sandcastle penis. Ah. And, yeah, and then they said, like, oh, and I'm like, oh, it's about 12 Inches. And I turned to my friend, and I'm like, I'm like, well, I can tell you it's 12 inches. They're like, you're 12 inches, and I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, 12 inches, and I'm like, I'm okay with this nickname. I'm very much okay. Thank you. I appreciate the nickname. <laughs> Sign uh, <him> out. 
<laughs> oh man, it sounds like you had a, like a, a blast that you're kind of. I like... did. I, I did. I had a good time. The only bad part about it was the sleeping condition because we had to sleep in a tent, and that tent was not comfortable. I mean, I I am about five foot nine. No, I'm, I'm close to five foot ten, and I was sleeping in a pup tent that accommodates maybe someone that's like five foot five, five foot six, and so mm-hmm. I had to sleep in a weird angle. My my uh, my colleague though, he's six foot four. And he had a worse time sleeping. I don't know how he slept. And slept. He had slept with his feet out on uh, on the tent. It was it was not a good. Thing. Oh god, that's that's rough. Actually, you know, I think yeah. you and I are about the same height, so that sounds yeah. rough. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um. Other than that, though, man, it has been a pretty decent trip. I really a bit, I've been enjoying my time here. You you've been out there for what about two weeks now? Uh, th- I'm on my third week now. I'm gonna be here for another month or bit. Just one more month, okay. Yeah. But uh, at least by the time you leave, the the nice sunny thing, spring will be hitting the the North Americas. So. Yeah, I know. You, you, you look, yeah, you, know, you were here for a little bit of the winter. Yeah, if I remember, right, you you were you had some of the, a lot of snow for a while for. A uh, bit. Yeah, we were getting we were getting destroyed in snow in Toronto. So well, because, I, because I still have a lot of family in Chicago, so I kept seeing posts and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I can imagine you're going from uh, snow to uh, sunny paradise for the most part. It sounds like. I know, but the sad, the, but my work schedule is I work overnight, so I work like so during the so right now uh, it is uh, twelve twelve uh, p.m. Tuesday March fifth. Okay, um, so is is it okay if I set the date and time? Of yeah, it's like yeah, uh, it's the, it works. Yeah. So You're in the future I'm, right now, so... I'm in the future, and the future is bleak. So, I am 13 hours ahead right now. And the thing about it that's really kind of cool is, um, well, it's beautiful outside. <laughs> and I can't sleep. Like, it's, I have difficulty sleeping because, like, you just want... Okay, like, if you were in a tropical paradise, in a way, like, would you want to sleep during work? No. Yeah. Like from what from what it sounds, it sounds amazing. I don't like. I wouldn't want to be sleep, having my regular vampire schedule where I sleep during the day and work at night. Yeah. I would want to be out and about. Yeah, you know what? You know exactly how I feel. Then with the whole, uh, with like you know having difficulty sometimes like sleeping during the day because you want to get stuff done. You want to go out and stuff. Exactly. Like for yeah. any, uh, if anyone wants to know a little bit about my sleeping schedule, audience, I literally have blackout curtains. Like I have, if I would, I would paint my room black, and no light would come in, and I was, that's how I would sleep if I could. But I want a little, a little color in my life. I don't want to live that life. So the only thing that blacks out the the light from the outside is some some really strong and exp- expensive curtains. Oh, I thought you were going to say the only thing that blacks out. Uh... Your life is just—it's the—it's the void. Uh, that—that's—that's the—that's the real truth. But I don't let the people know. Yeah. Forget to heard that people. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, no, I can—I can see your your troubles, and oh, that's gonna—that's gonna be rough when you you make your way back over here. That jet lag's gonna. Right. Ugh. Yeah, yo, yo, fuck jet lag. I'm I'm happy where I am. So, uh, what was I gonna say? So, um. Big movies coming out tomorrow, man. Mar- Captain Marvel. Yes, uh, I'm excited. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna see if I can try watching it uh, earlier today or tomorrow morning. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna be trying to catch the the Thursday premiere too. Nice. Uh, I, I, so, what do you think about? Well, okay. What are your expectations going into this movie? Because I literally have nothing. Like, I don't know if it's gonna be good, bad. Like, if the movie's great. I'll be happy if it's if it sucks. I won't be disappointed because I have nothing going into this. What about you? <laughs> so um, this is my expectations. By the time this po- gets posted, the movie's been out, so you'll probably see um, a link. Uh, there's probably going to be a link to the my my uh, thoughts about that movie on this. But for now, like I said, this is my thoughts prior to watching the movie later this week. So I know I know. I know a little bit of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. I've been watching some videos, kind of explaining her character in the comics and stuff like that, and some of her storylines that she's been a part of. 
Uh, I've seen I've seen her characters in some of the cartoons prior, like before I even knew who she was a little bit. So I have I have a little bit of uh, an idea who Captain Marvel is or Miss Marvel as she's known in the comics uh, in, the, in the in the past. So my expectations for the film is kind of what I'm hoping for when thinking about any origin movie is I'm hoping they'll do a good job kind of explaining who she is uh, and what her role in her was. Uh, but I, I want them to establish why she's important to this big, expansive world, you know? Uh, if they can't do that, if they can't solidify her character, then I'm going to feel like the movie is going to dip a little bit for me. Because for the most part, Marvel movies have not had the best writing, but they have like pretty okay writing. It's kind of the 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 way the actors portray their characters and a little bit of the action sequences that kind of pull the movie a little bit more up. So as long as they can have some, as long as I forget who the actress is at the, off the top of my head at the moment, as long as she can provide a really good performance uh, and there's a reasonable amount of action. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be happy with the movie because the 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 supporting cast like Samuel L. Jackson, like you can't you can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, well, no, you can't. That, you know what? We'll see what happens. Okay, I I don't. Now, I like you do have a little bit of knowledge of Captain Marvel. I mean, we're gonna see whether or not like I I think they'll do her origin story fair. Um, I am kind of interested to see the whole '90s take, Hollywood '90s take. See that 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 era. I'm curious to see. But at the same time, though, um, I'm, I want to see I want to see this movie shine because I like I, I like seeing you know people uh, I like seeing these type of movies when they're out there. You know. Also, did you also know that today they dropped a new uh, Shazam trailer? Yeah, I just finished watching it a little, just like like an hour ago from this recording. It doesn't feel like there's any new. Co it feels like there's new content in there. I mean, who's the villain supposed to be on that one? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. I he just looks like yeah. some generic super powered villain. And, and uh, you see, and that's what and that's what bugs me because I hate generic super powered villains. Like that was the you know that was the biggest problem with the Green Lantern movie, right? I said it. You know, like. I don't know if you know this about me, but I am a massive Green Lantern fan. Are you? I did not know that. Yeah, I know. I, I am a massive Green Lantern fan. In fact, I've been pushing these guys to try to do a, a comics episode where I would talk about the lanterns. But Hey, I, I, if you guys want a guest host, I'm more than happy to join you guys for that one. Awesome. I'll definitely put, tell them that. But um, the thing about the Green Lantern movie that was wrong, absolutely fucking wrong, was... The introduction. You know what killed that movie was the introduction of Parallax. Yes. Now, I, uh, do, you, do you know a lot about the Green Lantern history? I know a reasonable amount. I, I, I've, right. I've read a couple of the comics. Well, when I say read, I've like watched a good chunk of. Yeah. Like so. So let me uh, let me just give you a little bit of history why it was so stupid to have him. Okay. Um. So during the events of Emerald Twilight, Hal Jordan, Coal City was destroyed. Hal Jordan went absolutely fucking ham, went nuts, became a villain, and became the villain known as Parallax, okay? Where basically he was just, he was just a tyrant at that point with the infinite power battery. And so he had all the Green Lantern power, and he was just a tyrant. Um, during the events of uh, Final Night, uh, the Sun Eater actually you know, ate the sun, and literally all, all hope was lost. Uh, Parallax returns. And he basically says, you know, he basically uh, says, you know, fuck you, fuck this shit. And he reignites the sun. Okay? You with me so mm -hmm. far, Jesus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the reason I said you're with me is because I, I don't know if my audio cut out, right? So apologies. Right? Oh, okay. Um, no, no, that, that works. That works. Yeah. So, yeah. So he reignites the sun. Um, and then, you know, there's one, and then there's one ring lantern left. And that's when it, you know, it, become, it goes to Kyle Rayner. Now, during the events of Rebirth, yeah. Um, Kyle Rayner actually flies to the sun and retrieves Hal Jordan's body. Uh, and, you know, stuff happens, and it is revealed that Parallax is actually an ancient parasite. 
Okay. Well, An ancient yeah, so parasite. I, yeah. I, I personally know which storyline you're talking. I've seen. Yeah. I've seen the whole story. But okay, for the yeah. listeners though. Continue. Exactly. And, and when he returns, and so eventually, you know, he, Galdrin becomes reborn. Like his, you know, his spirit was stuck to the specter, um, and Ganthet was able to. Uh, a, a now possessed Ganthet is able to use his last will to actually guide Hal Jordan's uh, spirit back to his body. Um, Hal Jordan is reignited, you know, and he's back to the hero he was. Like that fear, that doubt is gone. So that's that's what made it so good. And that, and then you know, and then after that, they have that epic battle where all four uh, sector, where all four human Green Lanterns actually go up against Parallax, a Ganthet infected Parallax. Right, so you have Kyle Rayner, uh, you know, using his artistic abilities uh, in his, you know, making those artistic constructs. You know, John Stewart just uh, doing his, uh, you know, John Stewart. He's a marine, but he's also doing his uh, really interesting, um, like heavily complicated construct because he's also an architect. Right, you have uh, Guy Gardner just basically doing whatever the fuck Guy Gardner does, and you have Hal Jordan, you know, going, you know, kicking it old school with his. He also had uh, Kilowog in there uh, helping out. So it was a really epic scene, okay? Like, you know, just... But then you introduce Parallax into the movie with some, like... I don't even remember the villain that was attached to him at the end there, right? And then I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, I'm like, it's like, it's like it was like watching an origin story of Superman, and then all of a sudden you fucking have Doomsday come. Or dark side, for the for the right? for the for that for the Ryan Reynolds film for the longest time I thought it was supposed to be like Galactus and shit. Yeah, I, I was like, are you feel like, eh, what what is this garbage? Yeah, I, I was like, what the fuck is this? Is stupid. I'm like, this is, and then at the ending they tease the Sinestro core, and I'm like, I'm like, no, a lot more happened to get to the Sinestro core. I'm like, there's a lot. I'm like, Sinestro actually looked like the good guy in this movie. He looked like he was genuinely trying to help, you know, like how he was supposed to. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, yeah, fuck it. I'm also a bitch. Right? <laughs> no, yeah, but, fuck. But, yeah, that's, like, that was my problem with it. It's like, you can rewrite that movie, right? You, can, you should, like, you don't introduce Parallax, right? It should have just been the origin story of the Lanterns, him going up against Sinestro, and Sinestro revealing to have a yellow power, bat, a yellow, a yellow uh, ring. So, right. so, okay, so here's, here's my question. So, this is, um, I, they haven't redacted it yet from their, their movie slated, but apparently there is still a Green Lantern score movie slated to come out 2020. So 2020. Yeah, I, so, I'm excited about that. And they, because they even introduced the Lanterns um, in the last Justice League movie. Yeah, and I yeah, was like, oh, should, wow, that was a good surprise. Yeah. Yeah, and even in the DC Universe movie, they show it. In fact, um, there was rumors that in the DC, in, there, was a, there was a released clip of uh, one of the trailers of the DC movies, of, I think it was Justice League, right, where they actually do mention, you know, I hope, where Alfred is saying, I hope it's not too late. And there's a, a green light, or I hope you're not too late, and a green light. It was, I, I believe that that movie was supposed to have a lantern. That's what a lot of people were speculating, and I thought so too. Yeah. Like, uh, you can't, and, and they all because they introduced the lantern in uh, the Wonder Woman movie. That's right. They introduced the lantern in the Wonder Woman movie, the first one, was it? Yes. Yes, it yeah, was. I, yeah. Yeah. Right. When they were talking about the big battle and everything. But the thing about it though is that like the Green Lantern Corps is so complex and it's so interesting. Like, and the thing about it as well is that like even when they do like you know the old period, like like when they do the old period pieces, like you know like the. Um, you know, and they go back to the 30s and 40s and stuff like that, right? There's absolutely no reason they couldn't have introduced Alan Scott, right? Like, uh, Alan, you know who Alan Scott is? Not off the top of my head. Alan Scott was the original Green Lantern, right? But his power wasn't based off the power battery. It was actually a meteor. It was known as a star heart. And okay, I know what, okay I, yeah, I know which one. But continue for the audience. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, I, so what the hell was his name again? I just lost it. The original Green Lantern. Carl. I just said his name. Yeah. Anyways, Welcome. so him, Alan Scott, right? There anyway, so Alan Scott, yeah, so Alan Scott, um, what, had, what happened was uh, he actually 
um, the beginning of his story is, it takes place in the 30s and 40s. Um, a meteor falls to Earth. He, uh, some old, some crazy old Chinese man, makes a lantern out of it, uh, and then they kill him for his magic lamp. Afterwards, he ends up, uh, that la same lantern ends up on a subway. And the, and the crazy engineer, and some crazy engineer, decides to make a lamp and a ring out of it, or a lamp out of it, and all of a sudden he regains his sanity. But that same lantern is actually on a train. Now, Alan Scott is a train conductor. The train crashes, and the lantern saves him. And it's told, you know, oh, take a ring, take a part of the ring, uh, and make it into a, uh, a ring. Sorry, take part of the lantern, make it into a ring. So he does that, and he starts fighting like mob bosses. So Alan Scott's Green Lantern portrayal, he was fighting, he was kind of like the old school Batman, you know, where he would fight like the Al Capone type guys. All right. Yeah, right. So that was, that was, his, that was his thing. I don't know why they couldn't introduce him, right? Because, again, Alan Scott's power is not based off the Green Lantern Corps. It's magical. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So, Although, so what's funny about it, though, is uh, yellow is the, is the weakness to the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, Alan Scott's power was wood. So, essentially, <laughs> a number two pencil can take out everyone in the Green Lantern Corps. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw them into a forest. Oh yeah, they're fucked. A forest uh, during the fall. During the fall. Uh, uh, so here, here, here's my question. Since there has really been no talks about the Green Lantern tour film, like that's there's nothing been, and they haven't redacted it. What what story would you like them to do for the Green Lantern score? Well, they kind of have to commit to the Sinestro core, in my opinion, because it is a good story. Now, if they want to fucking go ham, they can go with the Blackest Night story. But there is a lot to so, do with the Blackest Night story. <laughs> so I mean, they would have to basically reboot. If they ever do Blackest Night, it's rebooting the universe. If no, they need to reboot the universe, they'll do Blackest Night. Uh, well, we, right now they have to reboot because Ben Affleck just left as Batman and... There's rumors that Henry Cavill is going to be leaving as Superman. Yeah, right. And um, I think they're going to... No, wait, no. They're not doing it. They were, I, there was a rumor they, that they were going to do Flashpoint to reboot yeah. it, but that's been, that's been yeah. redacted too. They're not doing Flashpoint they anymore. Do, they could also do Crisis on Infinite Earths. That, that could fix some actors, yes. Yeah, that can fit it. I actually introduced Superboy Prime. Superboy Prime is fucking... He's actually, ham. He's, he's too OP, actually. Let, let's let, let's yes. take away Superboy Prime. Yeah, Superboy Prime is very OP. Uh, but yeah, th and that's the thing, is that there's so many different ways to can... Hell, you know what? I, I can even fucking theorize a way that they can fix the existing Green Lantern Core Universe movie. You know how? Very, very simple, right? Actually, instead of pushing, uh, like, they could do the whole, just basically have a quick interlude saying that Hal Jordan is now actually, that Hal Jordan relit the fucking, that Hal Jordan relit the, the sun, and his body is in there. That's it. That eliminates Hal Jordan, right? That, and still, whatever, do whatever you want with Parallax. But then introduce Kyle Rayner or Jon Stewart as the new Green Lantern. And do a movie based off them. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. That's very simple to do, and have them go up against and explain that in in the fall of of you know Hal Jordan, the Sinestro Corps has risen. Right, and that's it. So what what I'm hoping to actually see for a Green Lantern movie is kind of just kind of kind of skipping some of the. The introductions, like put a little bit of snippets of whoever they're going to be using for their main human, uh, Green Lantern, but already have uh, them already out in the in the universe, like having a, a galactic yeah. movie. Yeah, well, see, having like not because I, I don't want them to be on Earth having, because there's already everyone on Earth already. There's yeah, Superman. like like having like a Guardians of the Galaxy type best movie, right? Yes, yes, like that. That's yeah. that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And that's what they should do. Like, I mean, every, like, here's the thing. We live now in a day of age, in a day and age where they don't need to go into crazy background stories with these characters. It, like, right? I mean, everyone knows who, who that Green Lantern is. 
not everyone. Okay, like for example, if they did a Guy Gardner movie, it's like who the fuck is this guy? They'd have to explain who Guy Gardner is, right? But if they did like a John Stewart movie, I think enough fans know who John Stewart is, and they can provide him a proper backstory, maybe like a fifteen twenty, like a ten fifteen minute backstory where he's you know like he's a, he's an Iraq veteran, you know he's he's highly intelligent, he's a marine, he's um he's a he's an architect, right? They can just yeah. show that, and they can show that he gets the ring, how he gets the ring, and how he uses. It. And then the movie could be based, you know, and then it could picks off, you know, picks off where he's reporting for a mission on Oa, and then boom, takes off from there, right? They can even report, you know, oh, here's Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner's a struggling artist who got the ring, and then you could show all the hardship gone in like a two, three minute vignette, right? And how he became such a powerful lantern. Uh, even fucking touch on, you know, for a brief while he was Ion. Like, you know that, I, that. Yo, Kyle Rayner Ion is OP. He's more OP than Superboy Prime. He's essentially he? God at that point. Essentially, okay, the only person that I think that can beat uh, uh, Ion, Kyle Rayner Ion is probably uh, uh, future Superman under the blue sun. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I would think Silver Age Superman could do it. Because he well, was, yeah. well, he, well, he, well, I, I wouldn't count him. I, I wouldn't count him because he's really OP. Like he Silver Age Superman had every Super Age Superman had everything. Did you know that he had super ventriloquism powers? He also yeah, had like, he, su- yeah. So, yeah. For, so for anyone listening, and I know some people might be confused. So, like, I, for the most part, if you guys are still here, there, there is a lot of variations of different characters. So for for this context in particular. Silver Age Superman is one of the earliest versions of Superman, where the, the 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 way the writers wrote him, they they gave him powers to just figure out any situation to have him do almost just about anything. So Superman had just about every crazy power that the writer just wanted him to have. So including fa- super facial recog- super facial muscle control, so he can change his face around to look like people. <laughs> That one they had. Let, let's not forget that one. I mean, like, okay, Silver Age Superman. When you think Silver Age Superman, don't think of the Superman on the cover, right? You know, of Action Comics number one. You know, where that dude is freaking out because he's holding up a car. You know which comic I'm talking about, right? No, Action yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a yeah. classic. That's a classic yeah. cover. Although, although I think that dude is freaking out more over the fact that he's not eating because it was during the depression. Over the fact he's not eating from a you know a boot soup that night. Right? <laughs> um, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, like it, it was, so don't think that's Superman because that Superman, he, he actually was the most underpowered Superman of all of them. And then they brought out Silver Age Superman, as you said, and they're just like, hmm, Superman needs to fix the sink. Oh, super plumbing powers. Now he has super plumbing powers, right? It's like, what the fuck, Superman? It, it was insane. Then, you know, the, and then they tried to make him uh, modern age Superman and stuff like that. I mean, the. The best Superman is probably modern age Superman or the new 52 Superman, the rebooted one. No, because they, they, they kind of solidified a little bit. They kind of like reined in him. He, they made him more understandable. You know, it's not too bonkers, which works because then, yeah. kinda, then whoever is writing it can get an idea of what's happening. And uh, they, they, like that's, what's great is that writers sometimes have like a, a great variety to work with and sometimes they get free reign so we've gotten so many so many crazy stories and possibilities but oh, yeah. sometimes sometimes just oh. being able to uh go back and like okay these are this is what they can do let's work with that it's not yeah, too bad like, because sorry like <laughs> in the original superman movie fucking Chris, the christopher Reeve, when superman flew so fast against the earth that he rewound time I mean, that's a Silver Age dick move. That's literally a Silver Age, you know, he whipped out his Silver Age dick writing move and fucking, that's how they fixed it. Right? And then, um... I still have an issue with that scene. I still have an issue with that scene. Everyone has an issue with that scene. More importantly, that stupid S that he throws at Zod, remember in the second one? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, Family Guy touched on it, and they're like, what was that? It was a mild inconvenience. But... (laughs) And, like, he never did that again. I was like, what? I was like, what the fuck is this? Hold on. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was like, I don't know. But, like, and, but you know, I mean, the, the problem, playing Superman is hard. 
I mean, we touched on it the other day on, our, on one of our episodes where uh, there's a curse around playing Superman is that you get either typecasted or, or you know, or, or just shit like, you know, um, George Reeves, I believe his name was, right? The original Superman, the one that played him on TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, before this, he was a bit of a serious actor. He had, he had acting chops, but he took on the job as Superman. And he, couldn't, and he got typecasted. He couldn't get work as he was. Which led, which led him to a really dark place. Um, there's, there is rumors that he, would, that he was drunk on set all the time. No, I've, I've heard those rumors too. Yeah, right? I mean, I think uh, there was a Family Guy bit where, um, where they animated it, but George Reeves was like, he's like, he's like stop Lex Luthor, but he sh- showed up on stage drunk in his Superman outfit and just threw a whiskey bottle at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is amazing. I mean, that would be awesome. But yeah, I mean, but you also saw, um, but that's the, that's the problem with Superman, though. And like this new Superman, though, like Henry Cavill Superman is fine. I have no problems with him. Um, it's just, you can't really write for Superman because at the end of the day, you know the dude is going to live. Right? Yeah. He's going to survive. Right? And it's not like Batman where he can take a, you know, a dark turn and everything like that, or Wonder Woman where you don't know what's going to happen, but uh, it just that's the problem with Superman, and so so the, the, that's that's one thing you're right is that when 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 writing for Superman, there's almost no way for uh, you to for him to like, die. So when when they did uh, Batman v Superman and they introduced Doomsday in that, for me it ruined the classic story of the Doomsday Superman uh, storyline, where that's one of the few times he kind of I didn't really, but he 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 was gone. Like, and doing that storyline so early in this in that in the current uh, uh, DC universe franchise really like hampered the possibility because because that's one of the few times that and Doomsday is one of the few villains that can really go toe to toe with Doomsday, and for them to just kind of use it up so easily was very like why 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 ruin such a good storyline. So, like yeah, no. I... But they do. They, there's the only other villain is Darkseid now, and they've been hinting on Darkseid for a while. But, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do with Darkseid. Uh, I don't know either. I don't even know what's happening with the franchise. Like they, Will Smith just left uh, Suicide Squad too. So yeah, I don't blame him for that though. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame any. I don't blame. I don't blame anyone leaving. You know, they're even doing, like, and they released that new Birds of Prey one, uh, oh. uh, right? They're releasing, here's the thing. I'm okay with these franchises with introducing new characters and stuff like that. I'm not okay with the way that they are, um, with the way that they're doing some of these characters. Oh, hey, Jesus, just a heads up. I only have about another 20 or, 20 or odd minutes. No, that works. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, I, I, we'll start wrapping I, I up a little bit. I apologize. I didn't give you a heads up. It's, uh, I actually... Um, to actually do some work, right? Uh, but yeah, no, as, as I was saying, right, we have, there is, there's too much problems with it, right? With, with like, these all ongoing friends. Like, look at the Flash and Arrow, like the whole CW universe, right? Arrow season one, two, and three, amazing. The rest of them was shit. The last season picked up a bit. But then Flash season one and two were absolutely amazing. Then the rest of it, it just became a convoluted mess of shit. No, right? if, if- it was. It had its moments. I, like there, there was episodes that I enjoyed watching, but then there was a lot of filler that, like, huh? Yeah, why, I why do I need that? Um, I don't. And then they fucked up the whole Flashpoint. Like they had such a great, they had such a great possibility to do Flashpoint. And I'm like, I'm like, no, do Flashpoint. Like the closest we got to Flashpoint um, was that DC when they did the crossover uh, where it was with Vandal Savage. Oh, that was like I didn't. I didn't mind the Vandal Savage storyline. Yeah, that, that, that was a great story. It was great, and that was the closest we're gonna get to Flashpoint. Because remember, everyone died in a in a uh, I guess a nuclear storm, right? And then Flash <laughs> ran back in time to fix it, right? I'm like, I'm like, dude, that's totally Flashpoint. At first, I thought, oh my god, they got lazy and ripped off Flashpoint. And then I realized, oh shit, that's the closest we're gonna get to Flashpoint. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The, 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 the Flash- TV shows for no. Okay, go for it. See, like even if they did a, a Flashpoint movie, it'd be good. Um, 
what, hey, did you hear this? I heard this uh, interesting uh, storyline. Is that in the current Batman universe, right? Um, that Jason Todd is actually the Joker. The current, the like the current running series. Yeah, the current. That, uh, you know how the, you know how like you know they had a Jared Leto being the Joker. Oh wait, are we talking about movies or comics? Movies, movies. Okay, I did not hear about that. I did not yeah. hear about that. I heard that, that apparently a- that's one of the rumors, the storylines, is that it's that, that, that the reason that Joker looks so young compared to you know everyone bats faced is that that's, uh, that's Jason Todd. No, I don't want them to do Jason Todd. See, Jason Todd is... I like Jason Todd as, as the Red Hood. Actually, no, yes, you know what? I wanted, I I wanted them to do the Red Hood. I want, I want Jason Todd to be Red Hood because a, J, a Red Hood movie would be amazing. Or not a movie, but introducing him into the Batman universe would be amazing. See, Red Hood, they can even do a TV show kind of with him, like I, a Punisher, right? But, yeah, I, um, I don't know. Red Hood is a... He's a good. He's a good villain. And, uh, you know what, though, I'm kind of surprised they've never introduced Tim Drake yet. Nah, no. Oh, I know they yeah. haven't. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they haven't introduced Tim Drake yet, which is interesting. Um, maybe they'll introduce him in the next one, one of the next Batman movies. Well, as far as I know, the the next Batman movie is kind of a prequel with a young Batman. Yeah. And uh, Ben Affleck's uh, like an uh, executive on it. But, yeah, no, Batman gave, I mean, Ben Affleck gave it up. I mean, although it was his dream, and, and I don't give a fuck what anyone says. He did a good job as Batman. No, and I, I'll, I'll second that. He, he uh, you know, uh, memes aside he, in the beginning, he did yeah. a wonderful job portraying Batman and his version. Like, I liked it. The, it, older, it, it. the older Batman. The older Batman. The, uh, I guess you can say Dark Knight Returns Batman. Somewhere, like, somewhere near there. Yeah. Like, somewhere near yeah. there. So, just... Yeah, somewhere right before he just became a grumpy old piece of shit. Right? There you go. Um, there. Yeah. Although, like, you know what would also be a really good one is if they reintroduce or they introduce uh, Batman Beyond or Batman of the Future for our British fans, right? Um, you're a British fan, sorry, right? And you know, Batman, um, like, you know what? Did you ever watch Batman Beyond? Yes, I have. Batman Beyond, I think that, uh, that show was two things ahead of its time and way too fucking good to be on uh to be where it was right and that's- no and i agree with you on that it was a fantastic show a lot of a lot of interesting stories a yeah. good continuation of the batman series yeah it was great i love the whole like you know the whole cyberpunk you know retro you know future thing that they had going on right i loved uh you know terry mcginnis as batman he seemed like a very um I liked how, like, what I liked about it was how he didn't try to be uh, Bruce Wayne Batman. How the actor didn't try to be Bruce Wayne Batman, A, the voice actor. And two, the character did not try to be Batman as well, like, you know, Bruce Wayne Batman. He was his own Batman, right? He was, like, he was almost like a mix of Spider-Man and Batman because of his, um, um, because of, you know, like, remember, Terry McGinn is Batman. He liked to talk. Yeah, yeah. He liked banter. That that was that was the thing. Jeremy McGinn's Batman was banter, and that's what made it good. I mean, if you remember in the original and the Batman, you know, Batman the animated series, he was bat like uh, Kevin Conroy's Batman was serious as fuck, right? He was very yeah. serious. Yeah, he nah, never he got to never, business. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's kind of what you wanted from Batman, right? It's like it's like yeah, uh, yeah. Fuck this guy. I'm just gonna beat the shit out of him, right? <laughs> oh, that, yeah, yeah. Batman was very. Uh, I don't understand Batman's code. He will put someone, you know, he will give him permanent brain damage, but he will not kill. Hey, I don't know. That's a whole discussion for another day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Batman is something else. That, yeah, I've tried Ooh. to stay away from Batman. Yeah. But have you? Okay. Do you, you read a reasonable amount of comics, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure? Okay. Have you Have you been keeping track with... Uh, uh, which is what is it? What is it? What is it? Um, what is that? The the Batman Batman who laughs. No, I haven't. I haven't read any of those. 
Oh man, that that Batman's ridiculous. Though that 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 series where you get to see like alternate Batmans from the Dark Universe, it's oh, like yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm it's, gonna have to check it, that out. I'll, I'll send you a link. There's a there's a video that kind of explains kind of the whole storyline, so you don't have to worry about it. It's it's right. it's like it's two hours long, so it's like watching an entire movie. But man, it's gold. It's gold. Well, see, one of my favorite alternate universe Batmans is in my Batman set because uh, back in a while ago they released Batman 700. Um, it was like maybe like five, six years ago. And in it, it actually has uh, Damian Wayne Batman from the future. And it even has other future Batmans beyond that. Right? Damian Wayne Batman, he's, uh, he doesn't fuck around. Okay? No. Um, right? It, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's probably some really good, interesting storylines of the, some of the people that take up the mantle of Batman. Um, yeah, I have. I'd like to. Sh- I don't know. When we do do a comic episode, I am going to post up my collections. Okay, I do have some interesting reprints um, of comics that I actually put up on my wall. Uh, I have a because I have a I have a wall of, in my office where I have where talking points is. So on my wall, just to tell you now, I have a. So this is what I did back in 2011. Someone actually took Action Comics number one and scanned every page and uploaded it. Damn. A broken action. Like, it was, it was torn to shit, but the point is, it was there. So, what I did was, I went to Kinko's, okay? Uh, and I actually got them to help me reprint the comic, right? On, okay. on, news, on newsprint. Shoot, that's awesome. Yeah, so I kind of... So I have a replica Action Comics number one. Um, I also have an Amazing Fantasy with Spider-Man at the first cover. And I have a uh, uh, Detective Comics uh, Batman's first appearance. Ooh. Yeah, and I, so that's there. I also have when Superman died. Do you remember there was the black sleeve with the bleeding red symbol? Yes. I have that one. I have Spawn number one signed by Todd McFarlane. I have um, I have some old Iron Man's. I, I have I have Superman taking on Muhammad Ali just because I thought that was a fun comic. Um, what else do I have? I, I have no. It was no. It was Batman taking on Muhammad Ali. No, I, I can't remember. I have to look it up. Um, yeah, Someone's fighting someone Muhammad Ali. Him. Yeah. Um, I I have a bunch of all these comics that I that I have up, and I, you know what? I thoroughly enjoy it. Right. I enjoy collecting comics. And it's and and like I, I can't nerd out too much and be like I hate when they don't stick to the original story because it is because there's because the thing with comics is there's a lot of moving parts there's different series like especially with Blackest Night you know Blackest Night just wasn't the eight comics right it was like spanned it through every single one like almost huh. every every major every major uh, comic book had a Blackest Night uh, story attached to it. No, the the thing people don't understand sometimes is like like there's a lot of like sh- I, I forget the word there's a word that in the in that industry where it links like something that's mentioned on a separate comic uh, with a different hero links to this other comic and it then links there's a lot of connections that eventually kind of correlate to this final uh, thing that's happening, and sometimes yeah. people forget that this is a shared world. Like, like as far as we're talking for DC, it's all in the New Fifty Two. That's one one world. There's times where they they inter- they talk about other other uh, universes, but at the end of the day, uh, as far as that one universe, people are living on the same planet. Something that happens in this comic is going to affect something that happens in that comic. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's what makes stories like this cool. Is you you like you wonder like why did this happen in this story? And they just make a little bit of a snippet. Oh, because of this said hero uh, a couple days ago had to stop this one person. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And like, huh? What are yeah. you talking about? And you go back yeah, and like, the, you read like that a story. Footnote. Yeah, it'll yes. be like a footnote. You know, a footnote. You know, refer to you know Action Comics thirty seven or something. So. Yeah. So, you know that that that's what makes uh, comics like amazing. It's, it's just just this big universe of 
collections that just come to one and sometimes people just don't have uh, the the ability or the funds to read so many comics uh, but you know some you know if you you try to get out there there's there's some fun stories and there's a lot of fun connections and you you'll, yeah. you'll never know who you might find I know. well you know what if I can just say a couple of things before I go I, I, um, I want to actually encourage people to actually read some of the Green Lantern stories to get that terrible if you if, if you've watched if the only thing you know about the Green Lantern is the movie okay I I would love to give out a list of Green Lantern stories to read, okay? Because they make the Green Lantern look like a bitch. And I feel sorry if that's the only way you guys know the Green Lantern. Yeah, right. The Green Lantern was just absolutely great. Um, what else is there? So, what is... So, to finish it off, Jesus, what do you think... Actually, is this episode going to be released... Before or after your Captain Marvel? Uh, uh, this one, right this one's gonna be out in two weeks, so it's gonna be after. Okay. So, all right. So probably on the fifteenth. All right. So Captain Marvel will either be great or godly or ghastly. Um. um uh, you want me to go first, or you want to go first? Um. You know what? Based on what I'm seeing on trailers, I think Captain Marvel is gonna be your run of the mill movie. I think it's going to be comparable with. I think it's going to become up there with Ant Man, Ant Man Two type type uh, level of quality. Hmm. Actually, I might agree with you on that because I'm trying to think of how they introduced Ant Man. Oh no! Yeah. Actually, no no no! Ant Man was a little bit more comedic. How do I? Uh, let's go. I'm I'm trying to do a scale. Uh, from Mar Marvel movies, like uh, as far as like intro, maybe well, maybe on the level of not Thor. Thor was I was Thor Dark Thor. World was terrible. I don't think it's that. It's not going to be that bad of a film. It's going to probably maybe Captain America Winter uh, not Winter Soldier Captain America the First Avenger. Yeah, it could be on. Yeah, it could be an origin story based on that. That could be a good one. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking on that level, on that level. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be comparable to that. Nice. So that's that's my guess for everyone. So. Yeah. So anyone out there, if you want to let us know, hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Tyrant Dominus. You can get mad at Manny at No Inner Pod. Yeah, uh, No Inner Pod. We also expanded ourselves. Uh, we're now on Anchor and just about on every platform. Uh, we are on. Spotify, uh, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, a um, bunch of other ones that I can't think of right now, right? Uh, <laughs> but we mainly are, are on Anchor. It, basically, wherever there's a podcast, it's there. And our newest addition is the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, nice. so the YouTube channel that we've been working on, it's uh, actually thanks to you, by the way, for your help with the, with the software and information. No so problem, we were able, man. Yeah, so I was able to actually upload a few... We've been able to upload the, the videos uh, consistently, right? So they release at the exact same time as our as all the other videos. Oh, interesting. You guys moved away from Podbean and went to Anchor. Yeah, we went to Anchor. We were with Anchor. Anchor, is a, it, it's a good service, right? No, um, it is. I, use, I yeah. use it for my second podcast, Reaction Cast. So, nice. Um, yeah. so, so like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm currently I'm on three different podcasts right now, so... <laughs> Nice. Yeah. No. Uh, Dwayne is the one that usually like everyone does it, but Dwayne is the he's the he's the logistics behind it all of it. To be honest, does, is Dwayne he the, is the guy in the, holding the board meeting? Like, okay, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dwayne's, Dwayne, Yeah. Dwayne's the boss on that one, right? He's the he's the logistics guy. He does the numbers. He crunches the numbers. Hey. No. Yeah. He was in that. If I remember right, we discussed that he's he used to be in the in that business. If I remember right. So. Yeah. He's uh in the advertising media business. Yeah. Man, I should. I need to talk with him again. I, I need some. I need some tips, man. Yeah, but. talk to him. Reach out to him on uh, on on Instagram if you want. Anyone actually? Oh, oh yeah. Speaking of social media, um, <laughs> we're on uh, Twitter at No Inner Pod, um, No Inner Pod as well on Instagram, Facebook, the No Inner Monologue Podcast, and I feel I'm missing one. No, Twitter, Instagram, and and um, Facebook. You got all three. Yeah, unless you yeah, have more. That does yeah, those are all of them. Yeah. So, cool. 
Manny, you know, I want to thank you for the time. I know you just got off work, so, and hey, you're no in the problem, future, man. so. I'm always in the future, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm really to, uh, I'm glad I was able to help you out here with this. All right, man. All right, man. Everyone, thank, I want to thank Manny again. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. It was a little bit or shorter, and we're missing a couple pieces. But you know what? Uh, you guys, uh, there's going to be more fun to come after this. So look forward to oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to nerd out a, a little there. <laughs> I, got to, I, got, I, got, I actually got a chance to talk about my, uh, my love of the Green Lantern. Hey, trust me, uh, um, I'm not as big a fan as you are, but I do enjoy his storyline. There's a lot of things they can do. And yeah. I'm hoping whatever is going to happen in the, as far as the films, that they, they, they do something well because there are so many fun stories they can do with Green Lanterns. Not even with oh, the, sure. the human Green Lanterns. They can do like the aliens and everyone. There's, there's so much they oh, can yeah. do. Oh, there is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Kilowog, even on his own, could have his own damn spinoff movie. So, well... When the day comes, we'll, we'll talk about it. But for now, everyone, thanks for listening. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye. You gonna stay on? Hey everybody, uh, my name is Grant, and I host a podcast called It's Trivial. Now, It's Trivial is a game show in which I pit comedians, musicians, podcasters, and other interesting people against one another, usually in front of a live audience, for the sake of public ridicule. Hope you'll check it out. There's something there for everybody. There's stuff for uh, people who like movies, uh, music, uh, history, geography, comic books, and even more. Be sure to give me a follow here on social media on Instagram and Twitter at It's Trivial Show. And check out the entire first season of It's Trivial now in your favorite podcast app. Thanks.